Okay, Joel chapter 2. Let's quickly go to Joel chapter 2, King James Version 21 to 26. Fear not, O land. Okay, just wait, just pause. Say it again. Okay, that old land, we're going to put your name. Fear not, O Enojel, and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Let's go back to verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Now this scripture, Joel is a scripture that probably we know. If you go to chapter 1, Joel chapter 1, you see that they had just finished experiencing where the locust and all of that had, you know, had come in and had eaten crops and what have you. And that's why when you go down in chapter 2, you still see God now saying he's going to restore all of that. So it was a nation at the time that you would say had suffered drought. And you would call it probably like they were in the place of um, farmer in Judah. God was talking about Judah at this time. So at this time, you can imagine you going to the field. You didn't plan or bargain for it. Because when locust comes to eat, it does not come with a warning. When it comes to eat the crops, it won't warn you and tell you, I am going to be coming in two days' time, in a day's time. It just comes. It just happens. It's a kind of disaster or a destruction that does not give you notice. So they had just experienced that. And meaning that all their green fields and all their fruits were all gone, meaning that there was no food in the land, meaning that it was an economic uh, problem. It means that if, it, if you were a father, you will be thinking in your house, what will my children eat today? If you're a mother, you'll be thinking, what will my children eat the next day? Because you know what? There was nothing. So if you're going to bring it into our days, you say that at this time, it's your bank account. Imagine your bank account, where all your money has been for those of you that have money in the account. So where, where all the money that you have been studying and saving, 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 all of a sudden just disappears just like that and all the things that starts to run through your mind oh my god how am I going to do and at this point in time God told them what fear not he said don't be afraid and you know one thing I like about the word fear in this context and in this scripture is that King James Version Dictionary says that fear here is um, yare yare meaning that's the Hebrew word yare meaning do not be afraid of the physical manifestations happening in front of you they were not afraid of something that was yet to happen they were afraid of what they were seeing happening before their eyes. It was physical manifestations happening around them and God now tells them fear not. Don't be afraid of this thing that you're seeing. Oh land, don't be afraid. You can imagine when you are seeing things that should make you afraid and God says don't be afraid. And for some of us here, there are things around us that are making you afraid. You have every right to be afraid. The doctor's reports tells you that you need to be afraid. The, your bank account tells you you need to be afraid. The evil report that they gave you from your family tells you that you need to be afraid. But God says, fear not. How can he be giving an instruction like that at the time where everything is suggesting that you should be what? Afraid. And because it is easy to be afraid because you're seeing it. But you see what faith is. If you look at Hebrews 11, 1, the Bible now says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So, you see that for faith, it is what you are not seeing. The evidence of things not seen, that is faith. What fear is the evidence of things that you are seeing. That, do you understand the picture? So fear is what I am seeing. Faith is what you are not seeing. How do you marry the two? But God is saying, see, despite what you are not seeing, I want you to trust me. I want you to put your hope in me. I want you, don't look at, because if you keep looking at everything around you, fear will grip you. But as you look at that thing, can you still see beyond that thing that you are seeing. Now, when you look at the doctor's report, can you see beyond that doctor's report? Doctor's report has said what it is, but you are seeing good health beyond it. So, that is what faith is. And the Bible says that hope maketh not ashamed. I have come to speak to somebody today. And that is in Romans 5, chapter 5. The Bible will tell you that for hope maketh not ashamed. Meaning that if you hope in God, you can never be disappointed. 
You can never be disappointed. No matter what happens, if, it, if you hope in men, you will be disappointed. You could be disappointed if you begin to hope in men. But when you hope in God, the hope you have in God, he will never allow you see shame. He will never allow you see disgrace. He will never allow the enemy do you unto. He will never allow the tables turn around you. Ali Shayada. Because you know what? Fear is a spirit. And that's why when the Bible talks about fear, that's 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Whenever you become fretful, please stop and tell yourself, you spirit of fear, get out, get out, get out. Because it is a spirit. Ali Shayada. And the Bible says, but I've given you what? Of power and love and of sound mind. And fear doesn't just stop as a spirit. The Bible says, it is the spirit of bondage. Ali Kata in Romans 8 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So when the spirit of bondage comes, what does it do? It grips, brings fear. I want to pray for somebody here. Whatever it is you are hoping on God for, as your amen will turn up, I pray for you in 24 hours. That thing you have hoped for, carry it as an evidence. That thing you have hoped for, carry it as an evidence. That thing you have hoped for, carry it as a result. Carry it as an answer. Carry it as an answer. Before this week runs out, you will have your own answer. You will have your testimony. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. Hear me, that thing you're afraid of will not happen. You know what hope is? Hope is that you are waiting for something. You are expecting something. So you are staying in the place of waiting. You are staying in the place of expectation. You are staying in the place of wishing that this thing happens. Hear me as I hear the Lord. That thing you are waiting for. That thing you are expecting. You have put a date to it. Before that date, you will carry it as an evidence. Before that debt, you will carry it as an answer. Before that boss you are waiting, you are waiting for it from your office. You are waiting for that phone call. You are waiting for that email that will turn everything around. Hear me as I hear the Lord. You will carry your answer. It will happen bigger than you imagine. It will happen better than you expect. Let your amen make it your reality. Let your amen make it your reality. And the Bible says, so the Bible says, fear not, O land. Fear not, O Eno. Be glad and rejoice. So it starts with an instruction. Don't be afraid. It continues with another instruction. In the place of fear, be glad and rejoice. What does it mean to be glad? It means to be happy overjoyed. So it is how you feel when you hear a good news. God is saying, you haven't heard the good news yet, but I want you to begin to feel like you have heard the good news. It is how you feel when you have heard the good news. You know there's a way you feel when good news come. God is saying, if I, if I am going to do this thing for you, there is a way you need to feel. And before the good news, begin to feel like that. Begin to feel the way you will feel when you hear good news. And that is what it means to be glad. Rejoice means what? Rejoice is the combination of the two. The way you feel and you showing it. So when the Bible says rejoice, it means show, show your great happiness. Show that happiness. So happiness is not in the mind anymore. It is now you showing that happiness. And God is saying, you know what? If I am going to do great things, you must begin to act. You must begin to act like it before it comes. Because it's not when it comes you begin to act. Have the posture. Have the attitude. Begin to act like it has happened. How can today be great things are happening service? How you are looking into me and you begin to jump with excitement. You begin to shout with excitement. Because you know that you see this me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It must happen in me. It will happen in me. So you are not waiting till you get the letter. You are not waiting till it happens. You just enter me and you are already jumping. And somebody asks, why are you shouting and being excited? You said, I am seeing what you are not seeing. I can see something you cannot see. There is no how you will begin to jump and celebrate and that thing will not locate you. Do you know that the problem is that what God is trying to tell us, the problem with us believers is that we want to wait to see that thing. But the longer you, the more you wait, the longer you delay, you delay that thing from happening. Who has, who will be excited, anticipating something and yet you think that thing will not just show up. It just has to show because you know what? You are now calling it forth. You are telling it hurry up and come, hurry up and come because because I am waiting for you. Arikata, when you go out on the road, raise your head up. Be happy. Be excited. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. He is too faithful.
prideful to fail, uh, by two immutable things, uh, it is impossible for God to lie. As he said it, would he make it good? Our God is not a man that he should lie. Uh, neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Ayakata, uh, is there anything too difficult, too hard for him? Ayakata, uh, we God, uh, nothing uh, shall be uh, impossible. Who do I have? Uh, who knows? Uh, you will carry that baby this month. Who knows? Uh, you will get your appointment letter this month. Who knows uh, what you have been waiting for? What you have been crying about? This month you will dance about it. This month you will rejoice about it. Ayakata, I bring you good news from the throne room of God. This is your month of jubilee. This is your month of laughter. This is your month of celebration. We we may have enjoyed for a night, but your joy starts right now. Your joy starts right now. Can you rejoice? Can you shout? Can you celebrate?